Hello, welcome to the Rumble Studio. Today, I'd like to take a closer look at the three designs, almost certainly the most popular, at least in terms of who's seen it, is this one. This is V1 Dex Hand, version one Dex Hand. One of the characteristics of this hand is that the lower two joints are linked. So if you push the middle, the end also goes round. And it consists of two power degrees of freedom at each knuckle, and then a single long tendon, which passes through the middle of the finger, and a passive extensor tendon, and by passive I mean that it's pulled by a spring, on the back of the finger. And in concert, those three tendons, which are driven by servos, and that one passive tendon, can move a finger in any position. servos in total to power all the fingers and the thumb and there are three allocated to each finger to produce that motion and four allocated to the thumb because the thumb has an additional rotation in the base which is that rotation there so the v1 has a lot of features which make it attractive the fingers are three different sizes it also moves extremely quickly. It has a very nice fluid motion. I have published many hours of instructions and have still not finished all of the instructions for this hand. But there is enough out there that you can assemble it. What's left to do on those instructions is fit the electronics board and inject some code. Um, I've helped a few people through it. Um, I'm gonna do a membership for that as well as the videos, I think. But that touches on an interesting point. In terms of memberships, what it seems to me is that it's important there's a completely free layer and that if you've got the time and not a lot of money, that is enough. You're gonna need a little bit of money. You're gonna to have to have some physical components. Now, I'm also working on how people that are better off can sponsor those that are not, those that share the same passion of building robots. But nonetheless, if you've got more time than money, I think it makes sense that everything's available. And if you work through all of the video footage, particularly if it goes out unedited, then the information is there and you can find it and you can build guides to help other people find it. And frankly, that's something that you could exploit. Um, and then for those that have more resources than time, the goal would be to provide services that allow them to go faster and also to help others that are in the opposite position. So those are my thoughts on membership, but I digress. So the V1 Dex hand has eight micro slim servos up in the palm area, and it's got 10 more of the same size back here. If you're mounting the arm, you can also put a 40 mil or standard size servo for rotation. These servos are the slim version of what we consider to be a standard micro size. A micro size is going to be about 23 millimeters across here and typically they're about 12 millimeters thick. You see some variation up to about maybe in 12.9 of the push. But these ones, the ES33 series, they come in an 01, an 02, a 51 and a 52 depending on analog or digital and metal or plastic gears. Let's see if I can that one hand. If you compare the width, be clear that one of them is considerably thicker than the other and that was done because it gives the hand a slimmer appearance and also because this style of servo is typically used in areas where you don't need a lot of movement so they develop so they develop all of their power over a 90 degree angle most servers will sweep 180 degrees 
and that's good because it means that down here we can put the servos with the output shaft towards the edge and still essentially utilize all of the servos range. Although this is the one that most people have seen and most people want to make a hand, if I'm honest, it's not the one I'd recommend to start with. It's very advanced stuff. So if you've got no prior experience in robotics, it's gonna be hard, but up to you. People wanna try it, that one is out there. Um, and in a way, by not finishing the instructions, I'm kind of putting it out there as a challenge. So. I'm always interested to hear from anybody that's finished one of these and got it working. And if you send me some video, I'll put it up on the channel. slightly simpler hand to start with is the robot nano hand and this was built as a commission from a company called Silicon Highway and if you've bought any Nvidia products in Europe you will almost certainly have heard of Silicon Highway they are the largest distributor for Nvidia of AI products despite being a really tinsy tiny little company they just know what they're talking about when it comes to AI hardware. And this was originally developed as a marketing tool in many ways for the Jetson Nano. The Jetson Nano is one in a series of very small, what they call AI at the edge type boards, which were developed by NVIDIA as part of the overall program to allow robots to take over the world. And in fact, the Nano is just that very small bit there underneath the heatsink. The rest of this is all adapters, including one for a camera. So as part of the system on the robot Nano hand, there is a camera, which in fact fits up in the middle of the palm. The purpose of that is to act as an introduction to the world of computer vision with robotics. This hand has 10 degrees of freedom up in the hand. It has two for each finger, one which closes the finger and one which gives abduction and adduction. Abduction is moving away and adduction is moving towards. Each finger can do this, each finger can close independently and the thumb is opposable in the sense that it can rotate and then it can reach down but it's not opposable to all of the fingers. So the thumb is opposable to the first and second finger. It comes together in a pinch grip and various other patterns, which I think you can possibly now see scrolling in front of your screen. The robot, the robot nano hand is easy to print, has less motors, um, but those motors are more expensive um, so actually I think the price works out more or less the same in total because there's less of them. I will try and publish some prices when I run back through it. Um, but there's a lot of variation actually also depending on where you buy the servos from. But that is something to get into in a different video. For now I just wanted to introduce the robot nano hand. This has the most thorough instructions. This has plenty of video and it's also been augmented with notes and at the end of each note when you click on it it will take you to that point in the video. One important thing to note with the nano hand is that the software and in fact the board itself is now out of date. The Jetson Nano has now been replaced with the Orin Nano which is the new range of AI computers. It's considerably more powerful and it also runs a more up-to-date version of the software. However, things are in play and I'm expecting there to be new software for that hand shortly, so that shouldn't necessarily put you off, but I just wanted to let you know. 
the last project is the standard open arm which I am developing with Hugging Face for their little robot program. And that is an attempt to bring end-to-end -end learning to everybody. This arm has been designed to be as simple as possible across the board. It only uses one kind of servo. It uses six of them. They come in a 12 volt version, and they come in a 7.4 volt version. To use 12 volts for what are called your follower arms if you're making a teleoperation setup, and the 7.4 volt in the leader arms because they're slightly cheaper. This arm just has the six servos and seven printed pieces of plastic, well, seven and a little bit, and it only uses the components that come with the servo. And that is surprisingly important. Um, and maybe not surprising to some of you that live in places where it's hard to get hold of components. Um, I am very fortunate to live in a part of the world where I can just order up pretty much anything I need and it'll be delivered the next day. But I know that a lot of you are not in that situation. So this arm will allow you to get in to the most advanced, I mean, just hands down the most advanced open source initiative, going for robots, best supported, got a lot of really good people behind it. In fact, the guy that's leading it wrote the vision system for Optimus. Am I allowed to say that? I've said it. There you go. And here's the fellow now. He's called Remy Cadane. Very nice French man. And he is doing marvellous things with software. So I think this was the first, I don't know if it was the very first, but it was in the first batch of successful tests. He told me that they did 50 examples and the examples weren't great. Sometimes he had his arms in the shot, sometimes it was just the robot. So he was pleased with how well it coped. Trained it overnight on a Mac, I think M1. And the next day it had a 15% success rate. So it's just great stuff. I've waited, <laughs> I've waited years and years and years for this software to be given away in the way that Hugging Face is committed and has proven to do. Um, so I'm feeling tremendous excitement for possibilities with, with this arm. If you get two of these for using as your followers and two of them with a slightly different end, which allows you to control the movement, then you end up with a teleoperation rig. And so for a total of around about $400, plus probably some import taxes, depending on where you live, four of those and you're off to the races. That is what I would recommend. If you want to get started in robotics, it's going to be the simplest way to do it. Um, I'd wait a few more weeks. There's a, another release coming out. This one is pretty good. It's getting there. Um, I'm going to do another set of hardware revisions. It's going to be another set of software updates. And then we're going to push it out. So... Those are the three designs that I presently offer for your delight. Or pick a kit and buy one and build it. The question I'm asked the most is how to get started in robotics. And what I would say is build something. It doesn't have to be as complicated as these. Pick a kit, buy it, build it, and then start changing it in the direction which interests you the most without breaking it. If you do that in a way, and the easiest, simplest way is to only change one thing at a time, and if it stops working, put it back to make sure that it is still working, and then try something else, then you can learn a lot about what it takes to build robots.